Um, so to start, um, ISOTL 2024 is happening at the end of October. Um, mark your calendars. Uh, October 28th through, 20, uh, through 31st, we'll be meeting in French Lick, Indiana. Um, and the conference is uh, a special one because it is the 20th anniversary of ISOTL's very first conference and sort of founding. Um, Indiana University Bloomington was the site of that first conference meeting. And so we're returning um, to sort of reflect together on where the society has been and where it's going sort of moving forward into the future. Um, and that I think sort of encapsulates some of the overarching themes of the conference and themes that you might draw on as you look towards um, preparing your proposals for the uh, um, gathering. The logistics are that the submissions are due April 1st. There will not be extensions offered. Um, if you sort of count on those. Um, and the reason is because the uh, the conference organizers are really hoping to review and then send out acceptances in a timely manner so that folks who might need visas uh, or other sorts of documentation in order to come to the United States um, and present are able to get that done. So make sure that you get your work in by April 1st. I don't know the exact time of day <laughs> or time zone um, that that might be, but if you aim for April 1st in your time zone, you should be good. Um, there are several different proposal types. We have pre-conference workshops, which are those three hour block sessions um, where you're doing a lot of interaction and co-creating together with participants, um, either new understandings or um, new tools or um, new ways of thinking. Um, panels are 60 minute sessions where you'd have several presenters together. It's a great opportunity to bring together folks from very different perspectives um, and have them sort of share together and then engage with participants as well um, about whatever your topic is. Uh, papers are much shorter, they're 15 minute sessions and we really want you to be strict about that to leave room for um, questions and answers, although that five minutes can be sort of interspersed with your 15 minutes. Nancy, yes. Actually, um, so I just put in the chat the call for proposals for this year. This information is from last year. Oh, is um, it really? It, it was an unusually short framework for papers. So you'll see that we've gone back to um, papers are do, do, do 20 minutes, no more than 20 minutes, followed by 10 minutes of discussion. Excellent. Which is what we usually do. Okay. Uh, if you were in Utrecht, you probably noticed that people were very rushed and, <laughs> and they never got finished with everything. So just uh, check out the call for proposals for um, uh, kind of the presentation types. Thank you. And I'll make that correction for folks. Um, if I, I'll share the slides as a PDF afterwards. So um, I'll make that correction when I share those. Um, I think concurrent workshops are still 90 minutes this year. Is that right, Nancy? Um, and then posters um, are posters. Uh, <laughs> what we do encourage is that you're creative across the board, regardless of the kinds of proposal type that you are submitting. Um, think really, actively about how you're going to do engagement in your space. Um, just because you have 20 minutes for your paper and 10 minutes for Q&A um, doesn't mean that you need to be or should be reading a paper for 20 minutes um, and then waiting for your audience um, or participants to engage with you. Uh, instead, think about how you might be building in different opportunities for people to either look at your um, data or materials in a more hands-on ways, um, practice methods or other kinds of analysis that you might be sharing about, um, or how you're otherwise sort of modeling the kinds of engaged learning that you're likely sharing about and sort of representing in your SOTL. Um, posters also can be really creative, and I encourage you to check out the Teaching and Learning Inquiry website, which is iSOTL's journal, because they've been publishing posters um, in the past year. And there are some really cool examples of past posters that are very, very creative. So um, don't think that it should only look like that sort of three panel 
text heavy format that you may have seen at other disciplinary conferences. Um, Sarah or Nancy, would either of you want to talk through the proposal components? I can do that. So um, the proposal components are um, actually um, practically when we want to start writing that it's kind of starts with an idea. And then um, what uh, is so important is to be able to write a 300 word anonymous proposal, which is actually conveying and um, and helping the kind of reviewers to understand the idea, the framework. Um, it needs um, to be not that much, very much heavily based on the literature, but evidence-based and also kind of grounded on some relevant work, which is in the field. And it really is important to see how we are trying to connect to the audience and the ISADL. There is a, a very useful link on the ISADL webpage, which is about um, the conference pedagogy. Um, and which is really talk helping us to understand that what do we mean by a collaborative work and interactive work and kind of evidence-based uh, conversation that we are going to have in our work. So I would recommend that we think and look at that when we are writing that 300 word abstract to see that what's the context uh, at ISADL. Um, and then um, the anonymous, so there are two different versions of the abstract, one which is actually the abstract that we write, and the other one is when we anonymize that, because we definitely may, may name our institutions and also a lot of different contexts, but for the peer reviewers, because it's a kind of blind peer review, they don't see this information uh, when they are kind of uh, saying that what they think about your uh, paper and then the 10 the 100 word um uh, description is very much about how you're going to present that so if this is a poster if this is a paper it's like if you're using any kind of activities even if it's a poster it could still be a, lot, a little interactive so for example you may say that i'm using a qr code to ask for some thoughts or here is what i will the framework of my poster um, so just a very helpful and trans a clear trans um, description of what to expect in your session. Um, and they can envision that. Um, when it says that kind of the references, that's why I said that the 300 word abstract is um, kind of showing that it's grounded on some evidence about the relevant uh, context of your what you're doing. So the citations are basically supporting your argument there. Um, and also kind of the title, which is something that we can generate when we have thought about our work. So these are the things that we can, when we kind of the process of developing the ideas and everything, my own experience in writing these abstracts is that it may sound a lot when we think about the 300 word or very kind of few words, but the thing is that it's so a dynamic in, in kind of in nature because we are thinking about a, a session um, so um, an, an abstract kind of a, a proposal could be the one that has a, a balance of here is why I'm doing this and then here is how I'm doing kind of doing this or um, kind of sharing my topic and my um, um, presentation with everyone. Um, the workshops are a little um, more um kind of um they, they they include a lot a little more about your activities because they're very much activity based and interactions that you're using so it really depends on the format that you're choosing um to to just do your presentation if that makes sense thanks sarah um and as you've sort of prefaced for us the um review criteria uh, this is also pulled from the call for proposals whoops um, but all proposals are reviewed by two to three reviewers. These are all volunteers from the ISOTL community. Um, and then they're also reviewed by the conference host team. So um, lots of people will be taking a look at your presentation and thinking not only about um, the way that you've sort of expressed um, what you're aiming to do and the activities and engagement you're including through that, um, the different evidence bases you're drawing on and the scholarly communities you're connecting to, but they're also looking at how does your uh, proposal fit into the larger context of um, other proposals that have been submitted and the conference um, theme of that sort of 
reflecting backwards, looking forwards. Um, so if you can make that explicit, that's also helpful for reviewers as they're looking at your work. Um, overall, think about um, how your content is relating to some important questions or drawing on um, some current conversations, scholarly conversations in the social space. Um, the 10 references at the end is another good space to make some of those connections more explicit and those don't count as part of your word count um, intentionally so that you can really think and, and acknowledge the people who are um, sort of providing ideas and contributing to um, your learning and inspiring your own thinking. Um, work to think about how your, your um, work is contributing to so make explicit, I guess, how your work is contributing to um, the practice of SOTL, whether that's proposing a new framework or um, presenting really new research, um, or whether you're proposing um, a new perspective or way of thinking about um, questions or topics in teaching and learning that we've um, sort of commonly held or assumed for a while. Um, also make sure that you are um, applying the conference pedagogy. And thank you, Sarah, for um, sharing that earlier. I posted in the chat a link to that so that you can all read that. The sort of full description is really beautiful um, and a nice sort of reflection of the um, hope that we have that, that this community have um, a culture of inclusion, um, scholarly sort of evidence base and thoughtfulness um, and collegiality, uh, most of all. Um, this is the sort of overview of that pedagogy. And Nancy, I wondered if you would wanted to say anything else about it as sort of overview for folks who uh, might not be familiar with it. Sure. Uh, so this is a statement that um, a bunch of folks developed in 2017 um, to try to articulate, as Sophia said, the the culture, the ethos, if you will, of ISOTL conferences. Up until then, people who came to the conference and came back to the conference had a sense of what that culture and ethos was, um, but it hadn't been explicitly articulated. Um, and so we just worked to write it down and it's based in five principles that you'll see on that web page and that you see in this slide here for the little explanation. Um, yeah, it, you'll find if you haven't been to an ISOTO conference yet, you'll find that this pedagogy um, of the conference makes it a little different or a lot different from the conferences that you're used to. For me, they're a lot different from my disciplinary conference. Thank you, Nancy. And one thing I wanted to um, add or maybe make explicit, particularly regarding thinking about things like accessibility and inclusion in your sessions, um, is that there are lots of ways to do that and lots of sort of levels of accessibility and inclusion that you might think about. Um, one level might be, you know, are your slides using a uh, contrast that's viewable for people um, at a distance? Uh, and are you using large enough text for people to be able to see from the back of the room? And are you also describing what's on your, your slides so that folks who um, don't have vision um, are able to still sort of access the content of your work? Um, so that's one level. But another might be to think about how the way that we use language varies dramatically um, internationally. And so we might use uh, the word faculty and mean something different in different locations. Um, and I know in the United States, we often will use faculty as shorthand for um, sort of full-time academic staff or uh, professors or instructors. Um, but in other contexts, faculty might refer to a whole school um, or program um, or, or sort of disciplinary grouping of um, people and academics. So um, think about providing perhaps multiple um, terms as you're sharing about your work in order to make your um, language accessible for people who are attending. Um, recognizing also that it's impossible to do that perfectly and always, but um, aiming to, to try to find ways to translate your aims and goals across contexts. 
If I can just add one more thing is that, um, you know, when we are talking about a lot of different SOTO presentations in different formats, um, there are um, there, there are different lenses that each SOTO scholar may take in presenting their work. Some of them, some of us are just presenting on a SOTO study. Some of, those, some of us are talking about a meta-analysis of a SOTO study or something that is relevant uh, to the SOTO uh, pedagogy or perspectives and everything. So it's always very helpful, both in the apps, kind of the way that we're proposing and also framing our sessions to help the audience uh, and uh, the, the peers in the ISOTO community to see that what is basically the lens that we're taking here and also be prepared to have follow-up conversations with them. So because there are different ways that we're connecting with each other uh, through the lens of SOTO. Absolutely, thank you, Sarah, for adding that. Uh, one final thing is um, the attendance at ISOTL is also quite diverse, not only um, internationally and ethnically and culturally, but also positionally. Um, folks are coming from um, undergraduate and graduate student positions through to um, full-time tenured academics to um, faculty developers or educational or academic developers um, and librarians and other kinds of um, professional staff on our campuses. Um, and then all the way up through sort of vice provost and chancellor, vice chancellor level type people um, or emeritus professors. So um, don't assume first that students or staff aren't in the rooms as you're speaking um, because they very likely are. Um, and uh, think about how that sort of diversity of roles might um, shift some of the questions you might ask of participants uh, in terms of self-reflection or other kinds of engagement.